ended it and gave birth to the next chapter in our lives the right way. It was a tribute to the way we'd been married, the way we ended it. That's a fantastically difficult thing to do. How did you accomplish that? Um, kindness. That's all I can say. We knew that the marriage was untenable um, and we were sad about that. So we hunkered down, um, we went home to Cornwall and we walked on a beach and we drank a lot and we talked a lot. We laughed a lot, oddly. So those last few months of our relationship were pretty much like the first few months. We were good friends who decided to take a care about how we did this. Plus we have a daughter who we both love very much. So we wanted uh, this next chapter to be grown up. And I knew within six months of the, the final kind of separation that I was much lighter as a result of it. And I kind of started to claim my life back. Um, and I thought, oh God, what happens now? Do I do dating? How repulsive, I'll have to buy new pants. And I did do some dating and it was excruciating and difficult and not uh, an accomplished flirter. Um, I Are you not? not? Uh, mm, no, I'm quite direct. I think that is my form of flirting. Is um, I will give somebody an application for the It certainly has. She is an amazing person who has taught me more than anybody else I know because she's confounded everything I thought about parenthood. Everything I thought I could do well, I do pants. And things I didn't know I could do, I suddenly can do. All I know about it is that I love that kid enormously, which is good because sometimes we don't like each other very much. And we have wars uh, that I think mothers and daughters are supposed to have. My, my theory about this is that if you don't rub up against each other a little bit, the tearing apart when it comes, when they have to move on, would be unbearable. But I am connected to that kid in the most constant and solid way. And I thank God for that because it's a massive, profound blessing in my life. I'm afraid to say we're at the last record. I feel like I could do another hour of this. How can it be? Anyway, we have two minutes. <laughs> Tell me about your final choice, Tom. This is Elbow, One Day Like This, which is a massive, wonderful, joyful anthem. And I used to walk every morning to this song and it lifted my heart. And it's also one of those songs in my life that I'm a bit disappointed other people know about it. I thought I owned this song. This is Elbow singing for me, for my future. <laughs> Anyway, uh, 
and it's come back to, uh, I don't know if they say real news, but certainly more serious news. Yes, yeah, the rest of the headlines. I mean, as you heard there, David Cameron has welcomed Andy Murray to Downing Street, saying that the Wimbledon champion deserves a knighthood. The Home Secretary's given details of plans to make it easier to deport foreign terror suspects. And the top story this evening is that Egypt's interim president says he'll make public the results of an investigation into the deaths of 51 people shot outside a military barracks in Cairo. 17 minutes past five now, and let's get a travel update here, Drea. Good afternoon, starting with delays on the M25 heading clockwise into Essex at the QE2 bridge. An accident on that stretch is causing congestion to build back to junction 30, that's the exit for the A13. Delays also on other stretches of the M25 this afternoon in Berkshire, heading anti-clockwise between junction 15 and Junction 12, that's the exit to the M4 and the M3, also in Hertfordshire, heading clockwise between Junction 22 for St Albans and 23 for the A1M, and in Surrey, delays heading anti-clockwise on the M25 to Junction 7 for the M23 to Junction 6 for Godston, elsewhere on the M9 in Falkirk, northbound traffic busy but moving to the Junction no headlines. In the UK, for instance, we've had the ban of all punishment of children, journalists' right to protect their sources, the right of gay people to serve in the military, or the illegality yeah, of indefinitely storing DNA samples. Whatever the rights and wrongs of all those issues, people would, and I suspect a lot of people listening would say, well, we'll decide ourselves on these matters. Well, so I'm pretty sure the whole point is right. that the court was never meant to be a substitute for the national protection of human rights. It was always meant to be a backup role. And the point of this is that British judges have repeatedly said this, and they wanted assurances. What is wrong with having an assurance that we will not be complicit in the fruits of torture? It's as simple as that. Right, and I don't personally care very much what I'm going to have a tremendous map prize of this. We can keep it back from the world. So there are a fair amount of people who are going to be in England TV and Sky News and the David Villa to Atletico Madrid for a fee of 4.4 million pounds. The Football League have granted Coventry permission to play their home games at Northampton's Sixfield Stadium for the next three seasons. Coventry and the owners of the Rico Arena have been involved in a lengthy rent round. Capital Tigers have turned down an offer from Salford City Reds for stand-up Rangi Chase. They say it was way below their valuation. And David Hay says he signed to fight Tyson Fury on the 28th of September. He says, let's hope uh, he finally agrees and doesn't keep delaying. Word is he's looking to duck me and fight Tony the Tiger. Let's hope they're just rumors. It's uh, 24 minutes now before six. Well, we've been talking about Andy Murray being at Downing Street. He'll probably be getting a little bit of peace finally. Um, but he enjoyed the, uh, the celebration, of course, and the reception. Became the first Briton to win Wimbledon since 1936. David Cameron talked of the wind lifting the spirits of the whole country. It's one of the greatest in case you, you wake up and it didn't actually happen. So, yeah, I was just messaging all my friends and 
bear just laying up and bear just tough, tough to get to sleep last night. You looked completely befuddled on centre court when you'd won, but there was an extraordinary moment out here when you came on the walk back to the locker room and you just popped out onto the balcony and punched the air. It looked then as though you were saying to the crowd here, you, you had it sunk in exactly what you'd achieved. Yeah, I felt more probably about 20, 30 minutes later, I sat down uh, downstairs kind of on, on my own. I was waiting to do drug testing and that was when it kind of all hit me i just got like so tired i felt like i'd hit a wall and i think that was kind of when it all started to, to sink in like all of the emotions and uh what, what i had just done had you had you planned that moment i mean nobody nobody would predict you were going to win you see that sense but had you planned what you were going to do at the end of the match you know you walked up to the box to win single title since 1936 but then yet um virginia wade sitting in 77 um, I should be, you'd be able to remember that, but it's um, disappeared. You've got lots of things to remember, haven't you? Yeah. You've got lots of facts to pack in there. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, excuse you one or two. Uh, 21 minutes to six. A 17-year-old suppressed report into abuse at children's homes in North Wales, dating back to the 70s.
tortured and lost on the basis that the evidence being uh, used, supposed to be used by the Jordanians, was obtained through torturing his co-defendants. And the obvious answer to that was to get the Jordanians to say, we won't use evidence tainted by torture, we won't use evidence obtained through torturing your co-defendants against Abu Qatar. And once that was agreed in a treaty, he went back. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, leaving aside your, your, your analysis about Abu Qatar as being, you can put him on one side, but the, the point is that this convention for which we started... ...the UNICEF UK ambassador has been visiting the Durban camp, which was originally designed to hold 15,000 people. There are now 45,000 crowned in there. And I spoke to him a little earlier, and he was describing to me how people at the moment are trying to cope with conditions in scorching 45-degree heat. That woman I met uh, yesterday, pregnant, nine pregnant, she had to live, nine dust pregnant, she had the whole lot of the baby in the camp to me to So, these are the things that we Is it very, very cramped and cramped? Um, at the moment, none of us have absolutely no idea Championship point for Andy Murray. Backhand return from Djokovic. Backhand down the centre from Murray. Backhand slides from Murray off the centre from Murray. Murray. Backhand from Djokovic. Backhand from Murray down the centre. And now open up at the backhand again into the forehand corner. Djokovic down the line. Murray just trying to play every ball on his own merit to the moment. Point by point. I mean, once I got to the rally, um, I mean, I just dropped it out of basically just trying to make sure I got the ball. And uh, it's not good. On the grounds of Wimbledon at uh, just after 7 o'clock this morning. And uh, at about five past eight, in he came, um, having driven it home in the Surrey, a little bit late, but that was only because of uh, heavy traffic on the uh, approach into London, not because of any uh, malfunctioning alarm clock or anything like that. And he promptly uh, spoke to absolutely anybody who wanted to talk to him, uh, BBC, commercial stations, international stations, the press, the written media, of course. Uh, BBC. Start group that starts to move the shoe and creates creases, and I had the same problem in the final of the Australian Open, and it actually creates a blister. So I wanted to make sure I didn't, um, I didn't have that problem again yesterday, but at the start of the match, it was a bit of a problem.
stop looking. It is, stop looking, I'm telling you, you keep it on the road, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Same hotel, guys. Railway station. Don't be off in the front here. Don't be off in front of me. Back in the neck yard. Yeah. Okay. That's on its way to Brussels. There's his old plane start.
Yeah.